Vinland Saga, Season 2, Episode 24, Final Episode. It feels like a whole new a whole new chapter, honestly, after the events of the last episode. We're off the island, too. Not island, but... <laughs> we made it off the farm. Einar's disappointed. <laughs> it's nothing to farm. <laughs> oh my god, that is such an Einar thing to say. If I recall correctly, Einar did not have the best luck fishing. Einar, man, that was another life. Another time. It's been about a, a good 4,000 kills, 7 wars, 40 cities, 2 fathers, a life of slavery. This is a weird thought that gives me a little bit of existential dread. What even are you, if not for just the continuity of memories? Are any of your cells the same even? Is any part of your body the same? Is any part of your brain the same? It seems like a part of identity in our minds is continuity. It's like the, the boat paradox, if you have a boat made of blocks of wood, and one by one you replace the blocks with newer blocks until you have exactly the same boat structurally, just all with new wood, most people would agree that it's the same boat. What's weird about that though is you can take the blocks you removed and make another boat, and then you have two of the exact same boat, maybe. I actually don't identify with large sections of my childhood, and it's kind of a bizarre thing to look back on. Like, I had a whole acting career, and when people in my family bring it up, I almost want to, like, push it away, because it's it doesn't feel like me at all. Yet, of course, it is. I mean, maybe there's something especially true about this phenomenon at younger ages, because your mind is still forming. Point is, while this Thorfinn is the same Thorfinn that we saw in the first episode, he's not the same Thorfinn at all. Thorfinn 2 is really taking all this very graciously. Yeah, because you're facing a, yeah, you're facing a different life. But in my experience, these situations usually turn from fear to relief when you're hit with like, oh yeah, this is the the essence. It's still there. <laughs> Obviously, my life is very different from Thorfinn's, but every time I go back to New York, I have a brief moment where I feel I don't belong, and then I get into the city, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's it's just it's New York. It's still New York. What are, yeah, what are they even gonna... How do you even begin? Yo. <laughs> I wish- I should go back and watch the first episode again, I feel like there are some touches here. <laughs> Leaf just laughs at Thorfinn's peril. Hasn't changed a bit. Damn! The way he said that too. Leaf did it. He really did it. Who's a warrior now? Where's that kid? Half expected her to put. Yes, there it is. <laughs> I was gonna say punch, but yeah, that'll do. Man, that's, that's rough. That's harsh. This is a coping thing. Oh my god. Oh my god, if you only knew. If I was gonna do that, I would've just given you fake Thorfinn. This is not yet the heartwarming family reunion that I expected. But very in character for, for her. Yeah, especially with all this time. And I think more significantly, she probably just had to let go. So much happened to their family so quickly. Sometimes it's it's that or just drown. His mom will probably be a different story though. Just give it a little bit of time. Give it like 30 minutes. It's big of him to say this so graciously. Not an ounce of actual spite or jealousy. Fill in for me, will ya? They actually call him Bug Eyes? I thought that was a fan nickname. <laughs> That's really rude. She's gonna know right away. Damn, he's got nieces and nephews. I think she knows. Oh, 
Right, she probably has just been picturing him as she remembers him. Her last image of him. Yeah, she definitely sees Thor's in him too. Helga, if you only knew. Leave, man, he's just such a hero. My work is done here. It's the man. Give this man credit, like, he said he would and he did. He never gave up. Against all odds. It's such a perfect moment for Thorfinn, too, because he's become, like, a god among the Earth, right? He's just had so much weight on his shoulders. He's been fighting these impossible battles and, and winning them. He's now at this apex of life and identity, where he's almost peerless, or maybe peerless. But just given the context, for a second, he gets to be, like, his mom's boy again. You know, he gets to be a child again. He lets let that off his shoulders or get back to a context where he's safe, taken care of. I feel more relief for him than I expected. I mean, I actually wasn't expecting him to go back, because this is a hard concept to put in words, something I've been chewing on. I think there's this hypothetical point where you are just for humanity, right? Like, if you have no enemies, a corollary of that is everyone is your family, if you know what I mean. So at a very personal level, you want to see him go back to his family. You want to see him have this reunion and live a normal life. On another level, he's entered into a different realm and the responsibilities for him, given his potential, given his power, given his knowledge, are so endless that I would also understand if he never went home again, just because of what is in front of him and what he has to do. But then seeing it, seeing him have this human moment, be able to have his family back, be a kid for a second, say things he's probably been dying to say forever, and giving his mom that chance, it's indispensable. <laughs> Alright, I cheated and looked it up. He was in the boat with them. That's a big weight to carry, too. They have that in common, they were both there. Don't be ridiculous. I think Honor will be okay because it's not a stack of hay in a barn. <laughs> this is like the first levity in the show in so long. I don't know how to feel. He just coughed right in her face. There we go. Oh, got me the second time. I love how this is the man that took a hundred blows from seasoned veteran warriors. One punch from his sister almost takes him out. She has the strength of a hundred men confirmed. Truly is Thor's daughter. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Too bad no one bet on that one. There was money to be made. Seeing this, I'm actually more curious where Thorfinn goes from here because he's trying to create a world free of Knut's rule, which turns out not to be a necessary concern, but, you know, a land of freedom and peace. Does he stay here? Does he, like, try to bring people with him? There's just so many options. Also, I don't think this is really a risk for Thorfinn, but just thinking about life in general. This kind of thing can be dangerous. You got big plans, you got big dreams. This could get real comfortable. Yvir has a friend. She's cute, maybe. It's like the part of Big Fish where he finds the perfect village, but kind of forces himself to move on. How do you leave a place like this? Is that cynical? I don't know. Thorfinn was... これまでの16年間に経験したことを家族に語って聞かせた。悲しみと再生の歴史は聞くもの絶句させた。いや、that's <laughs> This seems so obvious now. I don't know why it's just occurring to me. The poetic beauty of the show starting with the arrival of a slave and then the events of the season. This is so amazing of her to say too. She's letting go of her son the second time. I think she understands the legacy. Oh, I got chills. 
After all they've been through, I trust trust them to be able to make it happen. <laughs> Leaf's just in for another adventure. This guy just can't turn it off. He's just born to warrior. It's alright, Leaf. I've, I've been with you from the beginning. Where is that kid? I really want to see him. Eat <laughs> his words. Vengeance on little child. He really was. Wise. That's what it's I don't know, it's both beautiful and painful, this whole thing. It's something I'm kind of struggling with, like what's the answer? Maybe there isn't one. I mean maybe this is the answer. But I've been on both sides, as I imagine most people have. Where great people told me wise things that I was not ready for. And I ended up traveling a, a really long way through a lot of difficulty and hardship just to arrive at the very things that they had told me, had I just listened, would have gotten there much faster. But maybe not as profoundly, you know, maybe it wouldn't have been as rich of an understanding. And the other side where I've seen people start down roads I've already traveled and try to tell them what I know, but you just can't, you just can't convey that kind of understanding with the necessary level of depth, except in very fortunate circumstances where for whatever reason, people just are, are just ready enough, you know? I think the benefit of having been on both sides of it though, is that it doesn't frustrate you as much perhaps because you just understand that that's the road people have to travel down and you just have to love them for it because you've been there, you've done the same thing. And if things don't go tragically wrong, I think ultimately you end up appreciating the road you traveled anyway, as long as you know you get to a place that's nice. So it's kind of just wishing people luck and love on their journeys, which I think is probably what Thoris felt for Thorfinn in his final moments. This also is something that Thorfinn will be catching up to right now. He probably understands that too, because of his position relative to others. I mean, now the world are in, in some small sense his children. He was a strange man as well, especially in this world. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I think this, this visit was necessary. It's Thorfinn kind of closing a circle. There's <laughs> a lot to unpack in that. Nice minor to say, even though it's like very overly simplistic, given the journey. Just to hear out loud that Thorfinn got the best qualities of his father, which he definitely did. More. Wow, they're side by side, and a Thor's shoulder pad is everything. This is the first time the vision of Thor's is actually touching him, right? They've been separated by distance up till now, I think. He looks great. His image caught up. <laughs> wow. It's crazy how alive Thor's feels in this episode. That's such a beautiful choice, having the, the mother. Having images of Thor's. He's still alive. He and his heroism just transcended his lifetime, transcended his physical body. Even long after he's forgotten, that will still be true. And so ends the second prologue of Villain Saga Season 2. This could easily be... I mean, the show has lives, right? Season 1 did such a masterful job setting up Thorfinn, the complexity of his character, the, the struggle, the difficulty to make the, the events of Season 2 this powerful. The events of Season 2 create what could be another hero story, what Thorfinn goes on to do with his fully realized state. In some key way, it feels like the adventure starts now. You could frame the first two seasons being Thorfinn's origin story, you know, being his hero origin story. What can I say about Villain Saga <laughs> Season 2? There's no way to summarize it, it's just too big. I'll start with some obvious things, the fact that it was just so be beautifully brought to life. You can tell that the team that worked on this had a deep feeling of honor for what they were doing, love for the source material, which is already great. Everything was so on point. I mean, every frame was a work of art, especially in the last handful of episodes. Music was excellent. Every single episode has at least one, usually two or three moments that are just visceral gut punches. It also is so unique in the way it goes. I, I don't remember. I don't think I've seen anything where they pulled off what they pulled off here, where the final battle is a conversation, yet it feels like the most dramatic tension of some of the best action scenes in the best climaxes. I think also the bar is set so impossibly high, which could have been something that the author tripped on in the 
execution, but it's pulled off so well that the end is just me questioning my own thinking, my own beliefs about what's possible. It like raises the ideal a thousand percent without sugarcoating, without glassing over or idealizing the base state of the world and mankind. It's what I love to see and what I think some of my favorite shows I've watched on this channel have done where it's like in order to really believe in the maximal beauty that they can depict, you have to also go all the way down to the point where there's nowhere left to go. And then anything you build on top of that when you're building up is built on a, a strong foundation because we know you're there. We know you're honest. Thinking about last episode, I can anticipate some criticism of it. I can anticipate some people not loving it because what if Canute just kills Thorfinn and what if he continues his rampage? What if it doesn't reach him? Which is a, a very real possibility, especially considering the, the frequent idea in the show might is right. My answer to that would be that's that's actually was very possible and that could happen. And that's what happened to Thor's. But then you look at the whole story and you realize the answer is already already there it's already contained and that's that each person rises to a level of heroism that does their, their maximal part that they can do the story won't end there it wouldn't have ended with Thorfinn's death on the beach it would have created ripples and that's part of the reason why I think that the flashes of Thor's were so masterful because like I said that is what happened to Thor's Thor's made a, a non-killing stand paid the ultimate price for it but he's still alive I mean Thorfinn is him Thorfinn is Thor's plus Thorfinn he stood on the rung of the ladder that Thor's set up and he climbed several steps higher it feels about this episode i didn't even know or really care to be perfectly honest if he went home but boy was i wrong uh, this was so essential thorfinn i think needed to go home to really see his younger self again like i was talking about previously with just entering spaces that you know it carries a certain kind of psychic information going back means fully facing himself his journey his past his father his whole trajectory and, and therefore you, you hope you think the dire significance of his future i love that his mom was right on board immediately understood what he had to do clearly a warrior herself one of my favorite parts of it is leaf just ready to go no hesitation he's been back in this village for five minutes he's already getting antsy and i'm really happy it feels right but i wasn't quite sure if it would happen that einer is right there that they seem to be inseparable now. Speaking of great surprises this season, Einar was such a great, great addition. Perfect counterpoint to Thorfinn, lovable and deep in his own right. The kind of bro anybody would be fortunate to have in their lives. Overall, I'm just floored. I think I need a little bit of time to process this season because there's so much. I mean, I could easily do a rewatch right now and probably get just as much out of it. So I'd like to do a Q&A for this. I want to thank everybody for being along for season two. I was blindsided by how good it was as much as I love season one. Thank you especially to patrons for making all of these videos possible now and always. I don't know when season three will happen. Hopefully it happens soon, but can't wait to see you guys back for that. And until then, the Q&A.